Hello my crafty tribe, this is Artsy Maddie and let's get creative. So today I'm going to walk you through making this adorable little miniature stepladder. So we're going to be using these medium size popsicle sticks from the Dollar Tree. You get 60 in a pack and one pack is plenty. So see there's a little tiny popsicle stick up above, that's the regular ones. So you want the ones that are just a bit bigger like this. So I'm going to cut one of them in half and then I've cut the rounded parts off as well. So I've just cut them down so there's no more rounded ends. And then just to give this strength, I'm using wood glue and then just um, lining it up so that the seams aren't the same. Like so the seams are alternating just to give it strength. And I'm using a bunch of clips to let them dry together so they don't warp or come apart. If you don't have clips like this though, uh, just wrap some painter's tape around it just to hold it in place while it's drying. And the wood glue gives it so much strength, it's totally worth it. Um, much more strength than hot glue. So the trick, the secret to this ladder is 30 degrees as well. If you watched my last video, <laughs> the secret to hexagons, that was 30 degrees. And funny enough, the secret to the ladder is 30 degrees as well. So I printed an image of a 30 degree angle to use as my template. And then for this part, I had to use hot glue just because I needed it to dry perfectly at 30 degrees. Now this part's important. So you need this to be opposite. So see how the one on the left, the piece on the right is on top. And then this one on the right, the piece on the left is on top. So it's important that it's a set of opposites. So just pay attention when you're gluing these together. So you want a pair of opposites. So that when you put them together, like two sides will be inner and two sides will be outer, if that makes sense. Just like how a stepladder is built. So then for the bottom, I'm just gonna square it up so that it'll sit flush with the table, like just sit flat on the bottom. So just run a ruler or a straight edge along that and then go from the shortest edge to the shortest edge. And then I'm just using a pair of um, the little pruning shears from Dollar Tree. But these popsicle sticks are actually quite thin, so even when they're doubled, if you just had a really strong pair of scissors, that would work as well. Or if you've treated yourself to a pair of those miter shears, those are gonna work great, I would assume. I'll have to treat myself to a pair one of these days, but for now, I'm just using these cheap little pruning shears from Dollar Tree, and they work okay for this. So then, I'm just testing them out here, making sure that they line up together and they do. So now we need a straight edge at the top as well. So I am using a sheet of just regular printer paper and then the width of my ruler and then just marking a straight edge across. And then same thing with the other one. So using that sheet of paper, the width of my ruler and then a line straight across. And then because this was four, thic four thicknesses of popsicle stick, I actually just took them out to the garage and chopped them on my chop saw. Um, you could do this probably for sure with the miter shears. Maybe with the scissors, I just didn't want it to get too splintery and be too tough. So I did use the chop saw for that part. Um, now for this part here, I'm just gonna be cutting the little steps for the step ladder <laughs> so all the little rungs that you step on so what I did again is just cutting off those rounded parts on the end and then getting two pieces out of the popsicle stick and then I'm gonna double these up as well so I forgot to hit record or whatever on that part but I've just doubled them up with wood glue and some little binder clips to hold them again if you don't have clips then just go ahead and wrap some painters tape around it so I clipped my two ladder pieces together before I used the chop saw just to make sure that they lined up evenly. So that's just another little tip as well. So then we just need some apple barrels, some little, um, what do you call them? Apple barrel, I guess. <laughs> basket, apple basket, that's the word I'm looking for. So I just kind of experimented with some bottle caps and coffee stir sticks. So one of the coffee stir sticks is from Dollarama, 
The other one is from Dollar Tree. I can't remember which is which, but they both look cute and I had some good results. So either way, for this one here, I'm using a little bit of a smaller bottle cap on the bottom and then just a milk cap on the top that's a little bit wider. So it, it gave it kind of a fluted basket, like so it's a little bit wider at the top. It's barely noticeable, but if you're into details like that, maybe just use a little bit of a smaller bottle cap on the bottom. So then I just cut quarter inch strips of some thin, just cereal box cardboard to wrap around the apple baskets. And just take your time. You want to hold down the hot glue because it will want to um, not stay down. The one of these, <laughs> one of the coffee stir sticks has a little tiny bit of a waxy feel to it. This one that I'm working with here in my hands, but I can't remember if that's the Dollarama one or the Dollar Tree one, but whichever, it does work. You just have to hold it down and be patient. So then once I had the top cut on these ladder rungs, I used this um, T-square or square from Dollar Tree. So it's that width, it's about an inch and a half that I put between each step. So if you just find something like a little bit wider than a regular ruler, and then you wanna just mark each step. And then once I had done that, I just kind of lined them up to make sure that I had done it right and they were all gonna line up evenly. So you'll see here, I just adjusted them just a tiny bit because the last couple of rungs were just off just a tiny bit. So just make sure to do this step. So you just wanna line them up side by side once you have them marked out. Sorry, I'm trying to go a little bit slower just for anybody that's gonna recreate these because I'm hoping that you will. They're, fairly simple crafts so I just wanted to walk you through step by step and just so they're really doable and easy for you guys so here I'm just double checking that they all lined up okay so just be sure to take the time to do that now I experimented a bit with this this seemed to be the easiest although it is still a little bit finicky but definitely worthwhile using the wood glue because it does give you so much strength once they're dry so I just used uh, about three quarters of wood glue and then at the very end I just put a little dot of hot glue just to hold it while I was working with it. So the hot glue will dry and then you're able to work with it a little bit. So basically these first few are tricky until you get your ladder a little bit more stable. So you just have to have a little bit of patience with the first few steps. So. I know it's hard to see under my finger there, but again, I'm just doing the same thing. So about three quarters inch of wood glue and then a little dot of hot glue. And I actually work just above the line. So I would set the wood like above the line. So make sure that you're just doing the same, whatever it is. If you go under, over, straight dead on the line, just make sure you're doing the same thing. So I get this side done and then I just leave it to dry for a couple hours until that wood glue is dry. So it was still pretty warm here. It didn't take long at all. I think it was just two hours and everything was really solid and, and had a lot more strength to it. So now on this other side, the rungs, the ladder legs or, or um, legs, I guess you would call them, so it's a little bit narrower on this side. So you're gonna have to cut down your pieces to be a little bit smaller, but make sure that you've put this together before you do that, just so you're sure of your measurement. So that's what I did. I waited till it was put together, dried on the other side, and then I cut down the pieces for this side. So it'll just be like a little hair that you're just cutting off with your strong scissors or, or um, shears or whatever you have. And then I just did the same thing, just that wood glue for most of it. And then if you need to, you can always run a bead of hot glue underneath the rungs as well, just to give it strength and hold it. And then for the top, you just need a piece. So I had glued another popsicle stick, just the full length um, doubled, because everything on this ladder is doubled because those popsicle sticks are so thin. And then I just cut one that's a little bit longer than all of them just to be that top step on your step ladder. 
and then you just let it dry. Just lots of drying with this craft. It took a bit of patience. <laughs> but it's really strong now. With all that wood glue, it is gonna hold up to packing it away and all that. So I'm happy with it. So now for these little buckets, I thought I'd show you a few different ways of putting handles on them. So for this one with the rounded tops, I just cut two little stubby pieces, um, like about an inch high each, and then glued them directly opposite each other on the basket. And then I have this tiny little dowel here and I'm just gonna cut it exactly the width to fit inside those two little pieces. So this one would be like a wooden um, dowel handle. And then again, I just gave it a quick sand and some wood glue for that as well. Always good to have baby wipes on hand for all the excess glue. So I had these skewers. They're just like shish kebab skewers um, soaking in some water for a couple hours just to make it nice and pliable. And it worked out great. So then I was able to just bend it to fit inside this little apple basket. And again, I just used some wood glue. And then after it was drying, I kind of didn't trust <laughs> the wet wood glue to hold it so I just did put a little piece of painters tape over the whole basket just to hold them down as they were drying. And then for the third basket I decided to try something different again so I just did a little tiny piece of twine, knotted each end and then uh, cut it off flush and then just glued them down to the basket. So there's your three different handle options whichever one you think is cutest. And then for a stain, I just mixed together a little bit of burnt umber with a little bit of caramel tan and kind of made this nutmeg sort of color, kind of an in-between. And then I just watered it down, so a bunch of water with it, covered the whole thing, and then just kind of did it like a stain. And then I just wiped off the excess. So just get it under all those little crevices, <laughs> kind of tricky. So then here, just going in with a little bit of a baby wipe and just getting any of the excess faux stain off of it. And then same thing for the little containers. So on all the little ap apple baskets, I just went through with the faux stain again and it kind of blended in that cardboard and just made it all cohesive and go together and it all looks like wood. So same thing, just giving it a quick wipe. So then once the stain was dry, I just gave the ladder a quick sand just to kind of make it look old and worn. So just around the edges and where you would be stepping on the edges. So just quick sand. And then to kind of give it a patina and kind of make it look aged and a little bit dirty, I just went through with a little bit of a gray wash. So gray mixed with a little bit of water, put it on, let it settle in the little grooves and stuff and where there would be you know, lots of um, footing on the step ladder, just kind of letting it sit on there and then just giving that a quick wipe down as well. So then um, I was lucky enough to find a couple of these strands of wooden beads at Dollar Tree. I couldn't believe it. I should have bought a lottery ticket that day, but um, I wish they were a little bit bigger, but I'm not going to complain. I'm just so happy that they're selling wood beads. I hope they bring in lots more for every season. Hopefully we can all get some. So these are going to be my apples. So I just have this leaf green color with a little bit of water in a plastic bag, just getting them all coated with it. So kind of like a thick stain. And then to help them dry, I just put them onto um, those shish, ke shish kebab skewers, the little wooden skewer things, and kind of spread them out and then laid them over this styrofoam tray to dry. So again, it was still hot. They dried pretty quickly. And then I was thinking I was gonna give them stems and that I was gonna use the skewer to be the stem. But as I was doing it, I just thought this is so much work and they're kind of too thick anyway to be the stem. 
so I kind of just gave up on that idea. I did a few of them, so a couple of them have stems, but the rest are not going to have stems. I just filled in the holes with a little bit of um, the polyfilla stuff and waited for them to dry and then just watered down a little bit more of the green leaf color paint and then just touched up all the edges. So a little bit finicky. You can see why I had all that paint in my nails. <laughs> it was a busy couple days of painting. So what do you guys think? Are you guys team green apple or team red apple? I like them both. I couldn't decide. That's why some of my projects have some green and red. I do like the sourness of the green apples though. They might be a little bit leaning towards my favorite. So here is the adorable little ladder all finished up. I hope you guys love it. I hope some of you recreate it. It wasn't too bad, not too hard, and it's less than a dollar to make a cute little step ladder. So today's video is part of the five under five challenge. I love this, it's so easy to remember. Fifth of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's always hosted by the Queens of Farmhouse. So Missy from Crafty Cove DIY and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And our guest host this month is uh, Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIY. And she loves Farmhouse as well. So if you love Farmhouse, these are the girls to check out. I will have their channel links in my description as well as the playlist full of fall tiered tree ideas. So this one is going to be quick. These are the little squirrel salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cover up the holes just so they're not so jump out that they're salt and pepper shakers. So I'm just going to show you how to, how to camouflage that a little bit. So you just start by filling the hole with some polyfilla. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I actually just wipe them down so that I wouldn't even have to sand. If you really want them flush and really want them camouflaged, you could do like a little buildup of the polyfilla and then sand it down smooth. But I wasn't too worried. I'm just doing a quick little fill in here. So once that was dry, I just went in with a little bit of burnt umber to help them blend in. And then once the burnt umber is dry, then you can go over it with a little touch of gloss Mod Podge and that'll make them shiny like the squirrels are so it'll just help it blend in even more. So depending if this bothers you or not, it's just a quick little fix. And then even under the bright, bright lights that I have for the um, showcasing stuff, <laughs> you can hardly even notice it. So just a quick little fix for those cute little, they have an owl set as well as a pumpkin set. They're pretty cute. So then this um, cute little wooden light, it has like a little night light kind of thing inside of it, just a tiny little LED. So I'm just going to give it kind of a wash um, to make it look like an apple. So I'm going in with that leaf green, a deep red and a little bit of a creamy linen color and just don't overthink it. So you're just going to wet down your paint and use it like a full watercolor. And you just want to be like loosey goosey with your brush. Don't overthink it. Don't let the colors get muddy. You just want to hit some parts with the green, some parts with the red and not let them mix too much. That's kind of the, the gist of it. And then I just wanted to cover it in just so you're not seeing all that plastic and the way that the that little night light is in there. So I just used regular popsicle sticks for this and I cut them all down to the width of this little night light thing. So I just took my time with those little um, pruning shears from Dollar Tree, cut them all down and then I couldn't decide. <laughs> I was kind of in between the wood glue and the hot glue. So if I had made it a little bit too short, I used hot glue and if it fit just fine, then I used wood glue because it would kind of hold itself in there tightly. And then I decided that um, looking through the words, you can kind of still see that plastic nightlight thing. So to kind of disguise it a bit, I'm going to use this coffee filter and this takes a little bit of patience. So just take your time and do a rough outline first get that cut down and then I just held it up 
like to the actual nightlight and then there's those little pieces of wood in there holding it together so you just have to trim down just below those but you still want it to cover the letters so you just have to be a little bit cautious and take your time and get it to fit just right and then once it does i just um, slipped it right in there and i'm just going to tack it in a few spots with hot glue just on the edges uh, just to hold it in place and hold it up against the front of the wood so you guys will have to tell me do you think this is a worthwhile thing are any of you going to try this out i know they've been selling these for a few years at dollar tree and i love them i love that they're wood and the night lights but i i don't like that they're open like i don't like that you see through everything so i thought this was kind of a good solution to to make them look enclosed and complete so then just carrying on with that watercolor treatment and just trying to line up the colors that i have like where i have the green and where i have the red and again just being kind of loosey-goosey with the brush not overthinking it lots of water and then once you have your colors just stop <laughs> don't let your colors get muddy on you so don't mix them together too much and then you're done and there it is lit up pretty cute so for the stem of the apple i'm actually going to use the bottom of a floral pick that was pretty big so it was kind of substantial it was a little bit hard to cut through um, the good thing was it left a few little wires on the end and i'm actually going to tuck those wires down in between the popsicle sticks and it'll give it a little bit more strength but it was a little bit tough to cut <laughs> so there i am just poking those little wires down in there and then i'm just going to glue a full leaf that i had on hand just from some florals and that is it turned it into a cute little apple let me know what you guys think of it and would you go to the trouble of closing it in or is that just too much work what do you guys think and then we're going to make the cute little apple cider stand so i found these recently at dollar tree these little corrugated metal sheets um, galvanized metal sheet and it is fairly flimsy and a little bit warped um, but it wasn't too hard to cut so I used some tin snips just because I had them, but I think you could actually cut through these with those same pruning shears or just some really strong scissors. Like it, it is quite thin. So then to try and make it more stable, I wanted to just reinforce it with some popsicle sticks. Um, I didn't trust my hot glue to actually bond really well to the metal though. So I ended up just using this Dollar Tree Fix All, but it did take overnight to dry. So just a heads up that there is a lot of drying and patience involved with these crafts, but definitely worthwhile. So once this dried with the fix all, it was really on there and it feels really secure. So then I thought I was going to be using two of these crates. So you'll see me preparing two of them, but I actually only end up using one. So again, I'm just mixing up that nutmeg color stain using the burnt umber and the caramel tan mixed together with lots of water and then just getting it all over the crates and then just wipe away the excess. So same thing, um, once this was dry, I just did the popsicle sticks and then I have four dowels as well. So just these thin little dowels. I can't remember if those come from Dollar Tree or Dollarama, but I'm sure you'll be able to find some. Um, if not like at Michael's or Hobby Lobby if you had to but I'm pretty sure Dollar Tree sells little dowels as well so then I cut down four regular popsicle sticks and that's just going to help me reinforce the roof so you'll see what I mean when we get to that point but I'm just going to stain them all so that they all blend in well when I put everything together so here I am fooling around with the two and I had made it really really tall and I just kind of realized it was too much so I decided to just use the one crate turned on its side and then I'll cut down the dowels to be a little shorter when we get to that point. So I'm just using a combination of wood glue and hot glue 
and the wood glue really is worth it because this feels really stable as well now that it's all dry so if you have some wood glue definitely worthwhile if you have the patience for letting it dry so just putting all of those um, dowels down in place and then I just had to cut about two inches off of each one just to cut them down for the roof So then I'm just going to tack the roof into place with some hot glue, but I'll be reinforcing them with those popsicle sticks. So this is just to hold it in place while I'm doing that. And then the funny part is it didn't even hold in place. It kind of let go on me. <laughs> I just needed it to hold for like one minute and it couldn't even do that. So definitely worthwhile to reinforce it. So I'm just going in with some wood glue and getting some down on those popsicle sticks. So I know once this dries, then it's really secure. I'm thinking this little stand will be cute. I can change it up for different seasons and stuff. So uh, you guys probably saw this too. This is just that hot apple cider sign from Dollar Tree. And I took a picture of it and just printed it small so that I could use it as the sign on my little stand here and so I'm just mounting it to some cereal box cardboard and I'm not really sure why but I made it double-sided you don't need to do that you can just make it single-sided and then I just did some searches for apple signs I like to do that when I'm like doing a particular craft I always like to look up like free printables for apples or apple signs and just kind of see what's available. Um, I'm also going to be making a garland. So this is a little stencil for a garland. So I just created these diamond shapes and I'm just doubling it up so it's nice and strong because I'll probably use it in the future too. So just getting a nice even diamond shape. And then this is just showing you a quick way to cut cut a whole bunch of them out of some scrapbook paper. So I scored some lines that were the width of the diamond and then just butted them all up against each other. And then I'm gonna be cutting out four rows at a time. So just a little trick if you're trying to create a whole bunch of little mini bunting. So I'll just show you a few here. So just cutting through the four pages easily of the scrapbook paper. And then once you've folded them a few times, they're almost falling apart anyway. So they're just, you just cut along the line really easily. And then you have a whole bunch of diamonds really quickly. And then I'm just gonna be folding them over, over top of the twine to make into little triangles. And then they're gonna alternate with little rectangles. So then I was just using the width of the popsicle stick and using the popsicle stick to actually fold it in half just to make a whole bunch of rectangles as well. So I marked out how much twine I need to go under the little um, apple cider stand and then I'm just going to alternate gluing the little rectangles and the little triangle bunting and I just used hot glue just because it's quick and holds it, <laughs> holds it in place while you're working. A little bit messy though but it's always so handy when things can dry quickly. So I actually did a whole bunch of this bunting just to have kind of in my little vignette here with my tiered tray and my other projects. But I'll just show you this tiny bit here for the, for the little apple cider stand. So then I glued some twine as well to the sign for the stand. And then I'm just gonna tie it onto the front of the stand. Just using the hot part of my glue to melt any of the excess glue that I had on there. So this was one of the signs that I found when I was just doing that apple sign search. And I just thought it was too cute too. So I made a couple of those, just mounted them to cardboard. I only show one with the stand, but I just made an extra. Just in case. I don't know how I'll display things in the future, so... 
So there it is, just tied to the front of the little stand. And here it is. And I'll show you, I got a whole bunch of this really sweet little miniature copper at the thrift store. And it had been passed up for quite a few weeks because when you get something um, with a certain color tag that's half price, I think it means it's been there for a couple months. So I was really happy that people passed those up for a couple months. <laughs> And then here's another cute little find, this little miniature chalkboard sign, and just another one of the little preview pictures that I found doing a Google search for a little hot apple cider stand. I think it's actually for um, a huge chalkboard poster. I just think it's so pretty. I might have to order one of those one day. And then I just put it on this sweet little truck. I found this truck at Walmart recently, and it was only $16. And I had been trying to figure out how to make a bigger truck that I could change out seasonally. And, but then this one came and it was $16 and I thought I can't make it for that. So I was really happy to pick that up. And then I'm just gonna transform these sweet little dollhouse chairs from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna turn them into kind of a farmhouse look. So I painted them black and then I'm just going to give them a really light, cute dry brushing just with the caramel tan color, just on the edges, you know, just where it looks like the paint wore off and there's no more black paint left on it. And then here's those little bags. So I think I got them for a dollar. Yeah, a dollar and a dollar fifty for all these sweet little copper pots. I just thought they were so cute and so perfect for this project. So I'm gonna have them displayed on the tiered tray with everything too. So then I found another printable on this website, a blog called Paint Me Pink. It's a beautiful blog, lots to browse through. And she has this free printable for um, a U-Pick apples, five cents, and fresh apple pies. I just thought it was adorable. So I'm gonna have that in the background of my little vignette as well. And I'll have the link to that in my description box too. And then I found this little um, sweet little wheat kind of tin planter thing that I thought was cute and I thought it would look cute with that black truck. And then I just filled it with some of these little greenery bouquets from Dollar Tree that I found over the summer. So I just trimmed them down a little bit and put them into a pool noodle. Just kind of quickly got them all evenly in there. Oh, it didn't take too much arranging. So now I have to decide it. So I have this as one of the options. And then I also went out and cut some, what I think is bergamot. I don't know for sure that it's bergamot, but I just let it dry. I thought it was really pretty with the yellow flowers. So this is my other option, although this is kind of triggering my asthma a little bit. <laughs> So I, the faux flowers might win out, but here's everything all together. And this tiered tray, I was so lucky to find this at the thrift store as well for $12. And then I think I had a coupon too for 20% off. So everything came together so reasonably priced and I was so happy with the way it all looks. So you guys will have to let me know uh, which flower you prefer, which apple you prefer. And just if you made it to the end of this video, I'm sorry it's so long. I was really trying to slow things down and give you the step-by-step -step if you want to recreate any of these, but let me know which you prefer, the bergamot, the faux flowers, are you a green apple person, a red apple person? And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all who have subscribed to my channel and keep coming back. You guys are the best, just the best. I have such an awesome crafty tribe. So if you haven't subscribed, maybe consider it. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. That means a lot. And be sure to check out the playlist. It's all fall tiered tree videos. So what's not to love about that? I'll have the link to the playlist in my description box. Thank you for watching.